You ready? I'm ready. The Playmakers Bar Podcast present Hoops Talk, hosted by Darnell the Playmaker Silence. NBA, college basketball, playoffs, Mars Madness. No matter what, we talking hoops, man. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, how y'all doing today? How are y'all doing today? Man, oh man, did I not tell you? Did, did, did I not tell you? Did I not tell you how game three to five was going to go? Boston was going to win game three at home. Golden State was going to come back and win game four. And they was going to win game five, giving Boston their first back-to-back loss of this postseason. Did I not tell you that? Of course I did. Y'all didn't listen to the playmaker. Y'all know who this is, the playmaker down there, Silent, bringing you today's edition of Hoops Talk. From the Playmakers Bar Network, subscribe not only to this podcast, but every podcast we got going. No matter what streaming platform you listen to, you can be an Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, you know. I can keep going, but... Just subscribing. Plus, go to our website, sign up to our website, subscribe to our website as well. Dplaymakersbar.com. Man, game five was last night. Man, there's a lot to take away from this game. If I was to told you that Steph Curry, who's been killing it for the Warriors in this whole NBA Finals, would not hit one three-pointer, ending a streak of 233 straight games regular season and postseason with a May 3. If I told you Steph Curry, who was averaging 35 points a game in these finals, won't even get to 20. If I would have told you that the Boston Celtics was going to take the third quarter by 11. If I would have told you that Jason Tatum had an efficient game for once. And then Marcus Smart gave you a 20 piece. If I would have told you this, you would think Boston would have won. You would have think Boston would have went to Golden State and took another game from Golden State. Nah, buddy. 104 to 94. Golden State takes game five and take the 3 2 lead. Jason Tatum, 27 points. 10 for 20 from the field, 5 for 9 from 3. He did miss four free throws. Had 10 boards, four assists. You know, had four turnovers. He cut cut down on the turnovers a bit. He was up there around the seven, eight mark. He got it down to four, so I'll give him credit on that. The minus 13 and plus the minus category, but hey, a few things happen. Marcus Smart gave you a 20 piece, like I said earlier. You know, you you got 10 from Robert Williams, nine for Al Horford. What has Al Horford been since game one? I hope that's not done much of anything since game one. But Jalen Brown, 18 points, 5 for 18 from the field, 0 for 5 from 3. I mean, we looking at Jason Taylor. Can we talk about Jalen Brown for a second? This is terrible. A minus 19 and plus minus category tied with Al Horford. I mean, what is this? Jason Taylor was efficient. Now, it took him a while to get there because, you know, he took the kind of like he took the first quarter off and then came back in the second quarter and third quarter. It was like, okay, I'm here. I'm ready to play now. And which part of the reason why that third quarter went the Boston Celtics way was because of Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum was efficient. Shot 50% from the field. Shot just, a, just above 50% from three. He was efficient. He gave you 27. He gave you 10 rebounds. Four assists. Okay. But Jalen Brown, sir, the main consistent guy that was on Boston, the man who was who was ahead to win Finals MVP, 18 points, five for 18 shooting, 0 for five from three. We looking at Steph Curry like, oh, Steph Curry, he didn't hit a three pointer. I mean, wow, he only had 16 points, seven for 22 from the field, 0 for nine shooting the three, with eight assists. And we looking at Steph Curry like, yo, did he just lose Finals MVP to Andrew Wiggins? No. Look at Jalen Brown. Jaylen. Steph Curry was a plus 15 and a plus minus. Jalen Brown was a minus 19, okay? 
okay? Steph Curry played the game that he need to be played on last night. He didn't hit a three and he struggled from the field, but he didn't force it, okay? He took what the defense gave him. That's why he had eight assists. Shout out to Klay Thompson. The one that Klay Thompson game would be looking for, but 21 points, you know, seven for 14 from the field, 50% from the field, five, five for 11 shooting, just under 50% from three point range. That's, that's more like it. We ain't, we ain't at the clay level yet, but that's more like it from Clay Thompson. You know, shout out to Jordan Poole, 14 points off the bench. Gary Payton Jr., 15 points off the bench. That's 29 points off the bench right there for the Golden State Warriors between them two. And you know, Boston whole bench gave you what three, six, nine, ten points total. You got one point from Derek White in 21 minutes. That's unacceptable. Grant Williams only gave you three. Then they gave you three off the bench. Peyton Pritchard, you only took, you only played five minutes, only gave you th three shots and didn't make none of them. I mean, yo, that's abysmal right here from the Boston bench to go along with other stuff that we've been looking at for Boston, like Jason Tatum and other games, stuff to suffer last night. Jalen Brown didn't show up last night. Al Horford ain't been the same since game one. There's a lot, I told you, there's a lot of takeaway from this game. But hey, the man of the night, the star of the night, has to be Andrew Wiggins. Coming off of a monster rebounding game in game four when he had 16 rebounds to go a long way, where he had like 20 points, 18, 20 points from the ring around that ring. He followed that up with a 26 point game, 13 rebounds on the night. 12 from 23 from the field, shot over 50% from the field, did not make a three as well. But it didn't matter. Plus 12. For Andrew Wiggins in the plus minor category. Hey, give Andrew Wiggins his credit, man. He came through. Steph was struggling. He stepped up. Clay was struggling to begin. Then he got it going a little bit. Jordan Poole came off the bench, gave you something off the bench, and along with Gabe Payton Jr. Why the chef was struggling. And hey, he was due for a game. The man, the man was, the man scored 34 in game one, 29 in game two, went back to 31 in game three, and dropped 43 in game four. And y'all act like, oh my god, he lost the finals MVP to Andrew Wiggins all of a sudden. Dude, one game! Steph Curry's the main reason why they have a 3-2 lead. Because without Steph Curry, he, he won't be tied 2-2. If he ain't go for 43 in game four in, in TD Garden up in Boston. I'll be pressed all the moment way too much. Andrew Wiggins is second on that list. And if he keep playing the way he is playing and Steph can't get and Steph is struggling the way he struggled yesterday, then Andrew Wiggins can get finals MVP. But for right now, through five games, Steph Curry is the front runner for finals MVP. Enough said, okay? Trust me. I don't think Steph Curry will shoot this poorly again this series. There's only two games left. If that, because they got to go to game six in Boston, which is Thursday night. I will get to that in a minute, though. But back to what I was saying. Jason Tatum, minus 13 plus minus. I hope it minus 19. Robert Wood was, Robert Wood was the, only Celtic starter, the only Celtic starter to be in a plus column for plus minus. He was a plus 11. Marcus Smart was a minus a nine. We got Brown minus 19. Grant Williams minus 18. Devin White a minus 13. And you look at the Warriors plus minus. Draymond Green plus 11. Shout out to Draymond Green, man. We get we get Draymond Green a lot of flag work by the way he's doing the way he he's gymnastic, he demonstrative, uh, always doing stuff that we don't like and stuff like that. But shout out to Draymond Green, man. Eight points, eight boards, six assists. He did foul out for the third time. He fouled out in game one. He fouled out in game, was it game three? In game five. Look, Draymond, he, he's not being vocal and loud like he used to be. He toned it down in game four. He toned it down last night. And look, but he was efficient when he was on the court. Eight points, eight boards. This, this, this. I got to give Draymond his props, man. Got to give Draymond his props. Plus 11 to plus minus. Auto Porter Jr., plus six. Andrew Williams a plus 12. Steph Curry a plus 15. Clay Thompson a plus 13. Greg Payton Jr. a plus 16. You know, Kevon Luna a plus 12. Jordan Poole a plus 2. These guys are playing efficient. 
good basketball and the Celtics are not. Okay. Golden State Warriors had six turnovers in the whole game. The Celtics had 18. I mean, look, we can point at Jason Tatum. We can point at Jalen Brown, Al Horford, whatever. Golden State is just playing better ball. That is color what it is. They just call it what it is. Golden State played better basketball last night than the Boston Celtics. Okay. Andrew Williams did his thing. Steph Curry did his game. Even though Steph Curry couldn't shoot and had problems. The man gave you eight assists. So he's like, yo, shots ain't falling for me and you. If I'm a teammate, let them get going. Andrew Williams doing his thing. Let me get him the ball. When you when it's not your might, can you go to the other avenues of the game to make sure your team wins? That was Steph Curry did. Eight assists, man. You can't you can't argue with eight assists. You only had one turnover the whole game. He was careful with the basketball. He took his shots. They weren't dropping, and he got his teammates involved. That's all you do. That's what we were looking for Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum to do. When it's not your night. Can you work other areas to get your team involved, to get your team the spark that they need? Jason Tatum, like I said, he only had four turnovers. He had four assists, 10 boards, and 27 points. And he shot 50% from the field, I mean. It's not it's not the numbers that we want to see from Jason Tatum. We want to see more. We want to see more dynamic play from Jason Tatum. We want to see, we want to see when Jason Tatum hit a shot, we know, oh man, that boy, he's feeling it. Oh, he's here. He's here. But look, man, he had an efficient game. Okay, Jalen Brown did not have an efficient game. He shot less than 30. He shot less than 30% from the field. 5 for 18. 0 for 5 from 3. Only 18 points. 8 of them came from the free throw line. Only 8 of his, eight of his most of his points, but about half of his points came from the free throw line. So, we can give flack on Jason Tatum, but Jalen Brown got to get it too. Jalen Brown got to get it too. I'm sorry. That is unacceptable. Now you're down 3-2. You're going back home where the last time you was there, Steph Curry went off of 43 to get the series tied. So what you do now, Boston? You got to win Thursday night to get back to San Francisco for a game seven. Sunday night on Father's Day, Juneteenth. Now, at the beginning of this whole finals, I picked the Golden State Warriors in six. Look where we stand at. Golden State is up 3-2. Game 6 is Thursday. I also said, if we get to this point, Clay Thompson is the Game 6 man. Look where we at. The man dropped 26 points. I mean 21 points. He shot 50% from the field. Just under 50% from 3. 21 points. Clay Thompson. In game six, somehow, some way, it just comes up. Game six is Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. And if Clay Thompson goes off like he does in usually on game six, the Golden State Warriors will be celebrating their fourth championship in eight years at TD Garden. And that's what I'm going with, okay? Because I picked them in six, I'm going to stick it in six. Because that's the way I just feel. Clay Thompson is finna show up Thursday night. And when he does, bye bye, Boston Celtics. I let Jalen Brown join the party along with Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart. I don't think Steph Curry gonna shoot this poorly. He might not get the thirty again. He might not get thirty on Thursday, but he'll get he'll get back in the twenties. He'll be back in the twenties. But I'm telling you, Game Six is Clay Thompson game. I just feel it. I just feel Clay Thompson's gonna come out in Game Six and put it into all of this. You see the press conference, he just looking, he like, two years, man. Two years. He was out for two years with two significant injuries. The Golden State is back in the finals all of a sudden. And you finna have a game six with that brother looking like, yo, if I do what I normally do in game six, banner number four with this, with this group is coming, y'all better watch it. Y'all better watch it. So, that's what I got for y'all. I mean, hey, game five was good, man. But game six is Thursday, so y'all enjoy. Y'all Tuesday, enjoy y'all Wednesday. And y'all get ready for Thursday, man, because I got a feeling this series is done.
in Boston. I'm the Playmaker from the Playmakers Blog Network. This has been this edition of Hoops Talk. Subscribe as usual. Let me know what you think. And I'll be talking to y'all after game six. Woo. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode as much as I enjoy bringing it to you. So if you want to stay updated and know when new episodes of Hoop Salts come out, subscribe and follow to the podcast. You can do this on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Speaker.com, or any of your favorite platforms, including iTunes slash Apple Podcasts. And for those of you who are listening on iTunes and Apple Podcasts, go ahead and drop a rate and review of the podcast to let us know how we're doing and how we can improve. And for those of you who want to see any other podcasts that we got going on, go ahead and subscribe to our website, theplaymakersblog.com, and you can see all the podcasts that we do. Until next time for Hoops Talk, it's your boy, the Playmaker Donnell Silent, signing off.